Welcome to your English 7 concept video. This video takes the place of your class lecture, saving class time for valuable discussion. Treat this video as you would a class lecture. Pay attention carefully and take notes. If you wish, pause the video or rewind it to understand something you missed. Bring questions to class. Okay? Let's go. Today we're talking about the short fiction concept of narrative perspective, also known as point of view. We'll start with terms. Narrative perspective is a specific term to refer to this concept. However, you may see some writers or speakers using words like narration or point of view. If you see narration or point of view, realize that you are talking about the same concept as narrative perspective. The definition is the view from which the narrator tells the story. So in all three of these terms, we are talking about how the story is told to you. And that regards the information that is revealed. Do you have all the information, some of the information, information from one person's perspective, or multiple persons' perspectives? This is the issue of narrative perspective or point of view. Let's note a couple principles connected to this definition. First, narrative perspectives can shift. An author may use multiple narrative perspectives in a single story. Authors often do this to create more interest and to make the reader question what is true versus what is not. Narrators are not always reliable. This can be some of the most interesting literature you will ever read when you find a narrator that cannot be trusted. That makes you question all the events that are being told to you and question the very world in which you are living through the story. Narrative perspective comes in four different categories, and they are first person, second person, third person limited, and third person omniscient. The second person voice is rarely used in literature. So let's take a look at that, understand the definition, and move past it to the three that are more commonly used. Second person voice involves the narrator speaking directly to the audience, including the audience in the action. This is a little bit odd because the audience cannot be part of literary action. The literary action is simply words on a page, and the reader rarely has any input on how the story shapes. However, sometimes narrators will use the second person voice, including pronouns like you or your, to address the reader directly. Look for pronouns like you or your to spot the second person voice. Now let's get to the three main voices in literature. First person, third person limited, and third person omniscient. In first person voice, the narrator is a character in the story and shows the reader only what he or she knows and experiences. The narrator uses personal pronouns like I, me, we, or us to identify that the voice is his or her. You will know who the character is. That character will have character traits, and this will shape the telling of the story. If you want to identify first-person voice, look for these pronouns. This will indicate its presence. Third person limited is somewhat similar to first person in its impact. In third person limited, the narrator is not a character in the story and shows the reader only what one character knows and experiences. In first person voice, only one character's perspective was relayed through the pronouns of I and me. This is much the same. Only one character's experience is related. However, the voice is not his or hers. In, you will not see personal pronouns like I, me, or you. You will see pronouns like he, she, or it, but seeing pronouns like he, she, or it will not necessarily identify third-person voice. Those pronouns are present in all storytelling. If you want to identify that you are reading a third-person story, look for the absence of I, me, or you personal pronouns. And then ask yourself, does the narrator only show one person's perspective? If so, it is third-person limited. If they show multiple perspectives in a third-person voice, you are dealing with third-person omniscient. In the third-person omniscient point of view, the narrator is not a character in the story and shows the reader information from a variety of perspectives. Once again, you will not see personal pronouns like I, me, or you. However, you will understand information from one person and then another and then another. Sometimes you will gain information that none of the characters know about. This indicates that you are watching the story from a godlike perspective, a perspective above that knows almost everything. 
authors will use one of these four voices to speak, to narrate their story. Understanding who the narrator is can help you understand the impact of the narration, can help you understand what the author is trying to say, and can lead you to be a more critical reader, trusting or not trusting narrators as is necessary. Remember to look for pronouns like I, me, we, us, you, and your to identify first person or second person voice. In their absence, you will find third person voices and you can differentiate between limited and omniscient simply by asking yourself how much information you have.